first organic reaction that I'm going to go through with you is involving alkanes. Okay, now these are our simplest organic molecule, so that's why I thought I'd start here. But it also encompasses a lot of the terms that we come across in the introductory um, organic reactions video. So we're looking at alkanes. Now alkanes are um, very simple but very unreactive um, molecules, okay, straightforward saturated hydrocarbons. There's no dipoles, okay, there's no lone pairs, and um, it's stable, okay, so very saturated and stable. We're going to take something very reactive to actually react with this, and that's our free radical. Now, if you remember from the last video, we actually uh, know what a free radical is, and that's something that has an unpaired electron. Okay, a single unpaired electron that's very, very reactive. And we're going to take that and we're going to substitute one of these hydrogens for that free radical. Okay, so this comes in three stages. We're actually looking at the reaction between chlorine and the alkanes here. So the first stage is to form our free radical. And this is known as a niche Initiation. Okay, help if I could spell it. So the initiation reaction. So this is where we form our free radical in the first place. So our chlorine molecule, okay, ClCl, actually splits to form two chlorine free radicals. Okay. Now this doesn't happen spontaneously. It's the presence of UV light that does this, okay? And what it causes is homolytic fission, homolytic bond fission, where one electron goes one way and one goes the other to form these two free radicals. If you put chlorine in the dark, then this does not happen. You need UV light to cause this bond fission, okay? So this reaction needs to be done in the light, otherwise we can't form our chlorine free radicals. Now once we've formed our chlorine free radicals, that's where um, the reaction really starts to proceed and that's called propagation. Okay, so we're propagating the reaction and actually um, it proceeds um, and to start forming some products for us. So there's two stages to this, okay, in our second stage. We take our methane and it reacts with a chlorine free radical. Now this chlorine free radical um, is very reactive and is basically, in general terms, just looking for another electron to satisfy this, to pair up with this lone electron here. Okay. So what it does is it takes one of the hydrogens okay, and one of the electrons that's involved in that double bond it has with the carbon. So we end up with HCl. Okay, so it takes a hydrogen and one of the electrons. And if we do that, what you'll notice, I'll take that away, is that this CH3 that's left over, now itself has an unpaired electron. So what we've actually formed as part of this process is a CH3 radical, okay, a CH3 free radical. Now that itself is very, very reactive. And that's why we have a second stage here. So the hydrogen has been removed from there to leave our methyl radical. And that, just like the chlorine one, will react with anything that's in its path to pair up that electron. So what it does is it reacts with another chlorine molecule. Because don't forget, within this reaction, you've not just got these chlorine free radicals and methane, you've still got some chlorine around as well. So the CH3 free radical reacts with chlorine to give, and in the same way that we did here, we get CH3Cl. It takes one of these chlorine atoms and one of its uh, bonding electrons to form CH3Cl. And uh, what's left over? Well, a chlorine free radical, okay? Now, this is what's called self-propagation or chain propagation because 
It's the chlorine-free radical that kickstarts the reaction in the first place. And as the reaction proceeds, we're actually reforming a chlorine-free radical. And what that does is it goes back and reacts with more methane. So this reaction goes around and around and around and around and actually forms um, CH3Cl, and that's our product. So the overall reaction is CH4 plus Cl2 gives us CH3Cl and HCl. Now there are stable products, okay, which are HCl and CH3Cl. These two free radicals keep reacting to form more products. So that's our overall reaction. So this just keeps going and going and going and going and going, all right? It's got to come to an end, okay? It's got to, uh, something's got to happen to actually stop this reaction, okay? Now there is one final stage known as termination. Kind of hard not to think about Arnie while we're talking about this last little bit. So we've got termination. So something can stop this reaction from happening. Well, in here, what we've got are free radicals reacting with uh, other larger molecules. But in termination, well, what's stopping two free radicals actually colliding to react themselves? What's stopping these two chlorine-free radicals um, uh, from colliding with each other and just forming Cl2 again? Well, nothing. So in our third stage, there are three possible termination steps. Okay, you could get, first of all, a chlorine free radical reacting with a chlorine free radical to form Cl2. Any other combinations we can think of? Well, yeah, why not a chlorine free radical because it's in the mix with methyl free radicals. So we could get um, a CH3 dot reacting with a Cl dot, and that would actually form CH3Cl, and that's quite useful because that's our product that we want. So that's CH3Cl. Now the last combination we can get is of course two of these, just like two chlorine free radicals, two of these can actually react. So we could get CH3 dot reacting with CH3 dot, okay, two methyl free radicals. Now those come together to form a larger molecule. So we're going to end up with C2H6. In other words, ethane. Okay. So this termination stage can throw up a random uh, product as well. So you're not going to get this, this one product or two products here. You could actually form a small amount of ethane as well. Okay. So three stages. Initiation one step to form your chlorine free radicals. Second, propagation, two steps. That's where the actual reaction's occurring, okay? And it's a chain reaction. Our third step is termination that includes three possible equations, okay? Where two, uh, the combination of two free radicals forms a product, okay? And just be wary of this one. Now this is the general free radical substitution reaction where we've substituted a hydrogen for a chlorine. Now this could happen with, um, with uh, bromine for example as well. It could happen with ethane or propane or any other alkane you can think of. Okay? So what you have to do is take this as a general um, series of reactions. If it's ethane you're working with, you're going to get chloroethane as a product, okay? Your larger product down here is going to be uh, butane, for example. So you have to adapt this to whatever you're given in a question, and there's examples of this on the worksheet. Now, one final thing as well. You will not get this here. This is not just where the reaction finishes, okay? Remember, we've got these chlorine-free radicals flying around they could very easily react with this CH3Cl even further, and you could end up with CH2Cl2, okay? So you could end up with dichloromethane or even trichloromethane. 
Okay, so you need to leave the reaction a lot longer for that to happen. So you can get, or you will get, a real mixture of products. Okay, so those two things be very, very wary of. But you've got to learn this series of reactions for your free radical substitution. Okay, the forming of the free radical, the actual reactions, and of course your termination step. Okay. So look at the worksheet, there's other tweaks and examples and things, uh, ways to try and trip you up in an exam paper based on this free radical substitution. So in the deep end here, ladies and gentlemen, but this is your first series of reactions you need to know about in terms of organic chemistry.